I strongly believe in market. So uh, 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 when you, when you uh, intervene in the market, you can never foresee the consequences. I think it's, uh, they are a good example, Britain. Mm. Britain, uh, many years ago, Theresa May, the prime minister, took the decision to make a press cap, similar with another country Europe would like to make now. And if, because of my loyalty, I was trying to convince that that was wrong. Then the consequence is going to be uh, uh, seen in three, four, five years, which is happening now. And what is the consequences? The citizens are already paying more. They are forced to pay much more now. There are many, many companies have already uh, unrupsy, so disappear, uh, 30 or 40 companies. So the government has been forced to take care of uh, millions of customers because no one other retailer would like to serve in such a conditions. And the market became a mess. Yeah. So why to repeat the same thing? It happened with, you mentioned with subsidies. I agree with subsidies for certain things during certain periods of time to help then that goes ahead. For instance, hydrogen. So hydrogen requires some kind of support initially for reaching a critical mass, we make those one competitive. But uh, the system as a whole, I feel I agree with you, is not the way. Look, the man you and I were just talking to, um, the CEO and chairman of Telefonica, was saying, look, we still have some problems about joined up thinking on a European level. Let's take this to your sector and the need to transform, which is more pertinent now with the Russia-Ukraine war than ever before as well. Is there joined up thinking across Europe? Is there a roadmap that actually takes these grandiose plans into reality? Well, uh, I think Europe has already done a lot of things well. So the fifth of 55 is a, already a great, great decision to try to decarbonize all the European uh, uh, economy and at the same time to generate jobs, high quality jobs, industry, et cetera, et cetera. But I think now we have an opportunity. I think uh, I call the fit for 55, I call fit for self-sufficiency. Mm. If we, instead to be so slow in building renewables, in building interconnection, in reinforcing our grids, in making green hydrogen, we had already been faster. So in this moment, the problem of supply had been already much lower than it is. But we still are in time. So let's to transform fit for 55 and fit for self-sufficiency. And that is precisely with the uh, repower for Europe, has been part of recently by European Commission, mm -hmm. pretend. But now it's, we have to pass from the point of goals to the fact. And for that, we need already clear, stable, predictable regulation. And the, uh, and to, and the rule of law has to, have to be already crucial for taking the, the investment which is required in this sector. But I'm optimistic. So now we are in the trend to transform Europe in self-sufficiency and to achieve the fit for fit fast consequence of that one. All of this, of course, heightened by the war in Ukraine as well. What do you say to those people who say we have to completely rethink our are falling out of love with hydrocarbons. We have to rethink our use of coal. We actually have to have more hydrocarbons and gas in order to have the transition fuels as well. What do you say to those people who want investment in those areas rather than renewables because of our energy security? I always defend that the gas is a, is a transition uh, technology. So I think gas is going to stand still for it. But if for we spend the money on more gas infrastructure, what does that mean well, for renewables money? I, I think, but my point is that uh, renewables are cheaper than gas. And they provide some sufficiency. I think the first thing is today, uh, not with the price of gas, which are much more expensive, but with the normal prices of gas. Technologies like solar or technologies like wind are already uh, more competitive than the gas technology itself. So the capex is less. They have not already a variable cost because they are not fuel for that one. And the price we can already provide to the citizens is lower than another one. So for me, my point is, Acceleration, acceleration, acceleration on more renewables, more renewables, more renewables, and more grids for making that and more storage. Mm -hmm. So if we are able to combine this equation, I think in the next energy crisis, we will come. I think I'm old enough and I suffer three or four energy crises in my life. It will come again. And the solution has to be different than what it was. It's not a question of investing more in oil and gas. It's a question of investing more in renewables. And making that already with a permitting process very agile, which is not the case. You've already referred to the crisis.